are recording this. So, Seed Eco Home 2 Enterprise. So, today what, what I wanted to do is cover the revenue models that are available from this because we talked about one main thing, but there's different ways we can take a look at this for all the different value prop. Like we talked about value propositions of the CD Co home itself last time. Uh, beyond that, let's let's kind of survey survey out. Oh wait, this is a bad idea. The ah. kind of revenue models that arise from it, and that comes. Uh, there's a value proposition for various enterprises. There's six levels. Dogs. Uh, so I'm going to go through this here. So this is actually documented on a seed, seed Home 2. Once again, if you go to a Seed Home 2 page, mm -hmm. so this is the product we're developing. There's a, there's a development template, and then there's the enterprise development template. So all this is old stuff. This is nothing new here. I've been thinking about what is the unique value proposition for products at different levels. So there's housing per se, there's trainings, there's pro production. Uh, so you can talk about product strategy on at all the different levels. So, um, but let's talk about, okay, so I'm gonna share what I'm gonna look at and, and go through. Uh, no, it's this the standard Summer X uh, Zoom. So unique value proposition. So, um, and what's possible around this so we can, the idea was actually to create a development paradigm that allows people to show up. The, once again, the, the problem we're solving a lot in op open hardware and collaborative development is having people show up to collaborate because most people don't, don't believe that you can actually work that way. You think, they think you gotta have your little startup team and you gotta go behind closed walls. <coughs> so this, and uh, all the expertism, but like all this stuff can be um, made mm -hmm. modular and accessible so that you don't necessarily need this, this entire exclusive infrastructure for startups. So how do you do this open enterprise startup? That's kind of the whole thing. Uh, trouble with that is people showing up. I mean, literally it's like, uh, how many people do we have here? Of course, we, you know, we're developing our programs, but developing a, a way where a lot of people contribute and a lot of people um, see the direct economic benefit to themselves by it. So. The product exists, so, so to, to begin with, the product exists at, at six levels. Um, and of course, we've got the, the home itself. So last time we kind of focused on the home itself. Why is it unique and what values does it have compared to, to other housing? And we can ask people like, like Ben and others who are builders to give feedback on it. But we are getting good feedback from, like we're actually uh, the BNIM architecture people with Bob Berkebiel, they actually offered to do a design charrette uh, on this house. So a design, a di design charrette, meaning like getting a bunch of cool people in a room, a bunch of people in the know in the room to, to critique and awesome. and move forward on it. So a little war room. yeah, a little war room thing. Um, and we think we've got a decent idea, and and I don't think it's going to be like Bob Berkebiel is a cool guy, and he's he's open to new innovation to innovation. Uh, so he's been very constructive so far it's not like oh you can't do this or this is dumb or whatever you should do it this way it was like okay you've got this that's a cool idea we can go modular we can innovate on different modular panel systems like he's really interested in this like the one thing where the sideline is the magnesium oxide cement panels with mycelium insulation like and we have Peter McCoy on in, in our close contacts who's one of the experts in mycelia the, the mushroom guy from radical mycology, so it's you know something that's feasible. So yeah, we can innovate. But anyway, so there, there's the housing value proposition. And you can review last week's uh, YouTube recording, uh, which was is that on there? So if, just to point you to that, there's the enterprise session brand and license of of OSC. No, that was that was in that. Oh yeah, yeah. Here the this one two days ago. That was only on Friday. Right. Understanding the CD Go Home Value Proposition. Go through that. There we went through about an hour, uh, about an hour and ten minutes of explaining all the details of what the, the CD Go Home entails or intends to capture through its development. So there's the housing. Um, 
So the second thing that I'd like to see developed, um, and it could be a product, is this extreme enterprise hackathon. So how do you get a bunch of people organized around the enterprise development aspect, like, you know, say like Ken with a 3D printer, a bunch of people like s could sit in a room and actually contribute real assets, like website, assets, branding assets, business plans, like all of that. Like imagine, like what would it take to get a, a large number of people doing that and actually doing a hackathon-like thing, which hackathons are well-known format, but doing that for the development of a specific enterprise. So um, we were going to try to do that like around this time, but it's like, I think we're still developing the product in terms of like reifying or verifying the actual build ergonomics and what it actually takes to build like the cost structure. We're still at that. We're still really at that step of how much it's costing us and how quickly we can produce it and what features we can add at what price. Because after all, that house up there is still not finished. So we really need to the, the completion. I, I mean, Jeff is actually working on it right now. So he's we can actually help him. And you know, if we have any free time, uh, of course, Wes would like to help. So that, that's great and things like that. Um, but the hackathon is once we have um, enough product developed that it's so real like we saw some reality with this build and some people felt that reality I felt it more that oh yeah we can actually do it and more effectively than before but once for each iteration we make it more and more real then you can also invite external people to this large hackathon where you've got a lot of a lot of the design and CAD done and then we can work on the enterprise assets and think about yeah I mean the idea there was getting like a whole bunch of people to sign up for that. Uh, but still, we're trying to figure out how exactly to do that. So if you click on the XC, oh yeah, so let me just put this into the link so you can take a look at that as well. Um, By the way, the Echo Seat Home that we just talked about, I yeah. think it worked very well, uh, for me at least remotely, watching it with the time lapse and yeah. the discussions and everything. So You liked it? I had a certain level of involvement uh, mm -hmm. that was pretty good for, for virtual um, participation, so to speak. And, oh. and uh, I, yeah, the excitement kind of, yeah, got over. So, oh, so that's cool. Yeah. That's great to hear. Yeah. And you're more susceptible to it because you're well versed in the open culture. So that, that's, that's great. True. I have a positive attitude to <laughs> yes. it, that's for sure. But yeah. again, there was excitement on my part. No, that's, so that's, what did, so. yeah. cool. that's awesome. Um, it's good to hear. And and imagine, like, the more and more real it becomes, not only early adopters like yourself get into it, but then imagine getting the broader pools of people into it and them actually contributing. You're contributing, you're coming here for various aspects of this, and maybe you'll end up working on a larger 3D printers and things like that, and, um, you know, producing panels. But yeah, this is real. Like, we're in the virtual world and real world. But what are the limits of that? It's we're still trying to solve for people showing up, but you have to pr produce a decent value proposition. Like, you know, we have to have enough development in this that people actually are like, wow, that's actually getting super real. Especially if I think the, the break point would be that perhaps the people that participate in it, you're signing, it's like also marketing. You're signing up to get one of these houses in the future uh, according to a price structure and a product that we're actually developing all together. You know, that's a hard sell for people because it's like, People don't Some think that way. Some numbers need to be very defined. Yeah, go. yeah. But if you have critical mass on that, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was the idea, and we, we haven't done the Extreme Enterprise Hackathon, and I think it would actually be too early right now because we're not far, far enough along. But the idea is that could also be a revenue generating or like a, not a, well, an economically sustainable kind of event where you could have like a participation fee or sponsorship where this becomes a regular event. So here... This year we're developing the CD Eco Home, maybe another Extreme Enterprise Hackathon. We're nailing down the tractor or maybe whatever, the, the energy system or aquaponic greenhouse business model or something like that. But that's yet to be developed and I haven't seen a lot of uh, activity with that kind of explicit enterprise development outside of like maybe incubator hackathons. Like there, there's some hackathons that aim at the enterprise, but typically they're, they're more like where a bunch of teams find each other to create new ideas as a whole and then like kind of go off on our own and not really be open collaborative. So I don't see this model happening where 
people are meeting up for the actual explicit intent, we're going to create open enterprise. And once again, the distributive enterprise, where the missing link is the idea that um, the idea we are all developing, but we and anybody who participates gets significant value out of it because they can do it. Now, the problem with that is the five-legged dog problem because the person who's developing that, that entrepreneurial personality also has to be that developer, that collaborator, that teacher, because we're, te we're creating models that are based around teaching and, and distribution. So, so with distribution, you have to have teaching pretty much built into it. So you get into this five-legged dog issue where there's just not a lot of people that want to do all this stuff, and I'll just be like, I'll just do a startup or give me a cubicle job. So that's um, that's that's the other. Yeah. Um, so, but that's the thing that in the work with the CD Co Home, the hackathon is a product that we can be developing, and a regular event, a very powerful event that gets gets its reputation as an open collaborative enterprise development event starts gaining traction. Well, it's a slow burn version. It's the long haul version of it because the Extreme Enterprise Hackathon is 24 hours, like all weekend. You just, and why? So you can click on that XE Hackathon thing. I wrote a whole bunch about it because uh, we still want to solve this. We want to solve this. It's the idea where you can't get the top performers, the peak performers, to show up for three months. They've got their lives, right? Uh, some people will show up. Some of us are here. <laughs> but most won't. But you can get them to show up for like 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Get their expertise for that amount of time. And if we have enough organizational infrastructure behind that well-coordinated event, then it could potentially get, get far. The challenge there is, once again, rapidly teaching people how to collaborate and document everything so that event actually gets documented properly and all of that. Uh, so there's, there's a lot. But how do you see the physical versus virtual? I mean, mostly, yeah. It would most, it's, it's largely virtual. I mean, it could be largely virtual is the idea. It's, there would be, maybe we have like a core team here. We're, we're coordinating it. And maybe like the, the authentic idea would be that in that 24 hours, we generate ideas or plans or designs but also if we have the prototyping capacity at that time we could be rapid prototyping right there during those three hours uh, three days or two or three days with teams dedicated to that so we can be like doing our docs here there could be can print and stuff on a printer we're building new prototypes i mean we're kind of seeing it right here in a little bit in a little way uh, but it can be developed way more to to a super exciting event. It's like this gets into event production and experience. This is experience economy. People are participating to get into it real life. So that was the other, that's the second thing. Now, so enterprise training. How often would they? Once per year, I would say. It's like a grand event, possibly with sponsorships. But that's something like if we create all our branches in different places, yeah, we collaborate on that. That would be. Ideally, the OSC chapters and or campuses would collaborate, and we at least all of us do it, and all the people that are our audiences would come to that. Like, say we did this as a weekend during Summer X, yeah, we would have like 20 people from our side, and there would be other branches once we start going in other places. So, and do you um, do it more often if it's more narrowly defined, or you have more of the idea to yeah, do you really grand was, build or yeah, I was kind of looking at more like the grand build thing uh, because. I don't know, because it's um, the more energy you put into it, I think the more people can get excited about it. I think the excitement factor is pretty interesting about this. Like, imagine the, the concept of coordinating large numbers of people for tangible results in a short time. I mean, that's the kind of promise. Otherwise, if you don't make it big enough, it's not, if it's not a big, hairy, audacious goal. You don't, you know, people don't show up. Not enough people show up. And that's why the house would be great, because everyone wants a house. The house is a universal universally likable idea, so uh, I think that lends itself quite to that. As opposed to like, say we did a cordless drill, well, most people don't use a cordless drill, so things like that. But house, yeah, everybody, that would be a very popular thing that people would do. Uh, so, and then there's enterprise training. So once we develop this, once we get the turnkey package, here's our business, we proved it, building in the city, we're showing 
that the, uh, the other day I kind of mentioned that the enterprise that of interest is probably like a two hundred thousand dollars revenue, like profit, like profit revenue, uh, and I'm getting that figure from about ten house builds per year, where each one of them, after you pay all the costs, the so-called profit or the revenue, the net revenue for the organization that does that is like twenty five k, and that would be OSC, could be Ken, you guys who are doing it managing a team like here you want to manage a team and we're delivering a house every month or every two weeks or every one week eventually you know things like that as we start to really get this down but initially it's it could be realistic you know like one house every two months then one house every month maybe a couple of houses every month you know, things like that if we have 12 people because because that's the kind of ergonomics of production that we're trying to get to uh, but count like 10 8 to 10 8 houses per year you know, so that's like 1.5 months per house. That's a $200,000 business. That's something that could be sustainable. You know, with 200K, you know, that's the start of a, of a decent business that you can actually operate on and maybe hire one or two staff uh, to support you and stuff like that. So that's the model uh, with a basic enterprise, the management track, the, where we're managing. It's not a solopreneur. Like, it's not, it's not one guy doing the builds of the CD columns. But that's another model, right? So to this list, I mean, let me just add that the solopreneur route. Well, houses per se as an so we can say houses per se uh, as an enterprise, as a as an organized organized uh, as an enterprise, as opposed to the solopreneur, the guy who simply learns all these skills. You know, say one of us here just learns it and goes out on our own, just build, you know, builds for a friend. They got a friend. Hey, I, I really like this thing. I'll, you know, build for me. And say, hey, I got the skills. I'll do that. Pay me. Um, the solopreneur route. What is the potential in that? Uh, building uh, for others. Uh, so, assuming there, you're getting that. Well, if you're a solopreneur, you're doing the labor. You say you're not even, so that's like the extreme. You're not even hiring people. You have like a few months and then you're doing all the work yourself. So if it's um, 500 hours, how long is it gonna take you? If you're working sustainably like 40 hour weeks, that's 10 weeks, that's two and a half months, right? But you're getting for that two and a half months, you're getting 50K. Cause you're the organizer of that, you're doing all that entrepreneurial stuff plus you're the labor, so you're capturing the value of that labor, which is 25K on top of all the organizational stuff. So at that point you get 25, you get 50K over 2.5 months. So say that's, say that's like every quarter, well that's still a 200K enterprise as a solopreneur that I think is quite feasible. Any, any thoughts on this or what do you guys think? I, I think uh, anyone wanting to build these houses is better off getting a team of at least another person. Or yeah. But the modularity of it and the fact that it's possible, mm -hmm. it will be those people who are like middle of nowhere, nobody wants to go there. They get the lumber, they get the tools out, and then they get to do it. Yeah, so the solopreneur, if, so that's called that the extreme, that's 50K per 10 weeks uh, in this model. So that's still, you know, your 200K enterprise. But yeah, I mean, very likely he'll have a partner or somebody. Half time, yeah. I think it's, it's important to mention the experience. So, say, someone that is working on his own, they might not have the experience and they just might be learning or having like a few, few buildings so far. So I, I think that 50k for that kind of work is not very realistic. Well, unless they but I'm assuming that they have absorbed the content fully through a, like a two-year uh, apprenticeship, let's say. Yeah. That, would be, that would likely be the product, like if we start that program with the veterans, that's the kind of level I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. You're completely able to do it from A to Z. That would be the exact nature of the enterprise track. Yeah. And that's at the very beginning of this <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, apprenticeship. I was thinking that you guys would be at that level after six months where you can completely do that with good quality control, like that 50K per house, because you know, I mean, I really think it takes longer. There's, I'm assuming too much, because there's just too many elements yeah, to that. I mean, that down to a T. To get it down to a T. The house would be like completely ready, 
then we'll have a better approximation about that. what's the learning curve. Right, and I actually think that once we get this to the digital level where even we've got this augmented reality training or virtual reality training and all of that, you can possibly teach a person in six months, but I think they would have to have some skills to begin with. We can do way better than now because even because now we're still developing, right? Yeah. So we can do better than is now. But I'm thinking like realistically speaking, two years would be that would be a large audience of varied people of all kinds of skill sets that can be brought up over two years. We're not expecting five legged dogs. Mm -hmm. We're expecting a mass market of people who go into tech schools. And we can offer them we're saying, hey we're we're doing this, but we're really hacking the system because this is innovative enough that you're actually getting into that culture of progressive innovation. So the changing the world thing would appeal to those kinds of people. So that's that's the people who want to contribute to their community, who want to change their communities around them, and that's the kind of market kind of person we would select for. Um, but I, I just just say who has learned the 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 fully the full full build, I would say, in a two-year apprenticeship. Um, that is highly scalable. I think that's highly scalable that's over two years. Skills, but for yeah. Every well, yeah. I mean, like well, that's not counting like us using our own tractors or 3D printing parts. Once we get to that part, once we really beef up the, the digital enterprise on this with, say, 3D printed panels, I mean, that takes it to a new level. Now, these, these economics kind of change, but this is like, even if you're, say, renting equipment, this just assumes that you're doing all the labor. Because that's what we, like, for example, I rented a Bobcat. I wanted to go faster than life track because it would take me much longer and I'd probably break down or whatever. So, um, and, and now we're developing the machines further and further. So, I mean, we're using the machine for like four years ago. So we've had developments since then. Um, but yeah, that, that could change the economics. So here we're assuming um, assuming average Joe that's got some kind of, I mean, we're selecting for people with world vision, like some intent to change the world, not like, not just anybody who wants a job and, or a nine to five or whatever. Mm -hmm. This is this is like, yeah, you're signing up for a lifestyle. A different, uh, a different yeah. yeah. And that's our value proposition. It's not like, oh, that's bad. That's damn good. We're, that's That's how we, select through the different people and have it make it a, a really enriching kind of a, an atmosphere so we're changing the workplace like we're giving opportunities to act in a different way this is not just this dog eats dog economy we are serving people as our first thing not like spec we're actually into serving people um, so all the good values that we have and we would propagate our culture that way to regular people and that's what we have to do man it's not going to be our us hippies that are. That, well, that's, there's not enough, not enough. The progressive. <laughs> this is anything. about. Um, well, the that regular world. I mean, uh, that's the inclusive part means that there's way many more people than the people, the kind of progressive people that typically attend our workshops. Uh, the world is much bigger than. We need to really think seriously about it. I, I certainly. I mean, I started thinking much way more after COVID and thinking about you know the political struggles mm -hmm. these days and things like that. Uh, we got to consider that and like to yeah. low and medium income population, yeah. right? That's that's where we are heading, and they yeah. are the ones that are gonna change. Yeah, yeah. And maybe I don't know. They might sign up just for low cost or so, but then in the yeah. process might get them thinking, and oh, yeah. they have introduced to a different viewpoint. And yeah, maybe that maybe they come around, maybe not. For sure. I mean, we are in a in a price point of of the middle class or lower middle class or po more poor people we're, we're poor yeah well yeah like our price points there there for everybody in fact like the people who are very well off they'll be like no I want this this expensive cookie cutter house that's, that may not be our audience right mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's not our, probably not our audience so okay um, so after this let's talk about so enterprise training that's once we can and clone it, have a good package where we know this stuff works, we can get, so what's the profile of that 
entrepreneurial type? Do they have to be kind of like the people here, progressive? Could we also reach out to normal people who would be interested in this? I think there could be a lot of... Um, I don't know that market because we don't. I mean, we live in a progressive world, right? Like, I don't know the the more the profile of the more average person who's doing it, say, to make money, but they see this and they say, "Oh, well, I actually could make money and be socially progressive at the same time." There might be a market there, but I'm not so well versed in how much I think we should pursue of, that or anywhere. I think the idea of being able to build a house, with your house, with other people, and supplying a good product, it's, that's a very universal value. It's all baked in here. Yeah. Like, the progressive person would be maybe more into the open source ethics of it, but if you're doing something better to, and faster, and then behind that have the story of this is why, and this is our approach, and you can do that with everything, I think that's a universal human value. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So there's that. Um, and then also there's another category like on the product side. So we didn't talk about, we just talked about the house per se, but what are the different ways to do it? One is the turnkey. The thing that I keep emphasizing is the turnkey build because most people will, will want a turnkey build, right? So that's, that's the way we were framing it. But what about those kits? what would a kit model look like? Mm -hmm. So obviously we're not gonna charge a client $50,000, so it would be something less. Maybe it's like $10,000 for a well-prepared kit. And then you'd count in how much value you have added to stock that people can get off the shelf. Like the, our plans are gonna be open, so what value are we providing that we're getting paid for? And that could be your customer support. It could be the jigs that we provide to people. Here's how you actually build. So maybe like like the package, the the basic kit package could be, this is a whole pile of different jigs that allow you to build this house four times faster than if you just got the materials and started building on your own. That would be a great value proposition. You're cutting that person's time. Because 400 hours or 500 hours, that's when you know how to do it. First time builder going to be double or quadruple that, but right? But what are we talking here? Like We're talking about selling a kit. Like, how how could we implement the kit route? Because one one route we can approach is we got the product. We're going to sell to you as a turnkey product. That's it. That's what the average person wants. Yeah. Right? How, do you, how do you give know-how? Like, given that the plants are open for everyone, how do you still supply a product to those people? That yeah, like are product. We are not going to sell them the wood, right? We could. We could package everything up and pre-cut it. That would be one. I mean, if you talk about product as kits, that would be one version. We simply pre-cut and pre-do everything for that person. So they're only like screwing things together and assembling all that measuring and figuring out what materials you need. I mean, it's all about accounting. If we give them the package with possibly even this piece of wood has got number one and ex et cetera. Nails, yeah. Nails, yeah, all of that. Like, here's your bag of screws. Here's the wood numbered from. Here's your bucket. Here's the wood, just like we numbered when we disassembled this. It's all numbered. It might have, you know, pre, pre-marked joist positions or 3D printed jigs and things like that. I mean, what exactly are those things? I think that's the value for the people, right? More than. Okay, this is the plan. You go to Menards and you buy it all by yourself, and you go to see what, what you can Well, do. the value of that is that there's absolutely free. Like the, the, yeah. that part of it exists. Like yeah, that's the baseline. Right? Yeah, yeah, the baseline accessibility. What I'm not in, like in favor is like not giving, not being completely open and transparent with the way we work, and like if we're gonna charge for us type of instructional, I think we're kind of missing out. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, we still, yeah, no, I agree. We, we publish everything, but the point is that we, we add some other value. Like, for example, you can print your, you know, publish your file of that jig, but it's another thing to actually produce that jig for somebody and actually ship it to them. So they're going to pay for atoms at that point. So would there be a case for, uh, I think the plain kit where you just have done the step of ordering the correct materials, that's huge value too. Uh, course, yeah. But the question is, would there be a good market for that? Like, would people want that? I like, mean, 
to really to really corner that market, you need to bring down material costs. You need to work okay. at scale. And right. So that okay. So that's a good point. So if we describe that plain material thing, that's where we have de developed solid supplier uh, relationships where we actually get uh, price cuts and all that. So we're kind of the that mediator, and we have access to lowering costs through that. But we're still selling. The plain materials we're not giving we're not actually getting them from menards we're actually getting them from the people that sell to menards mm -hmm. and we're we may be like maybe have a warehouse we don't i don't believe so much in stockpiling stuff so that's the risk yeah. uh, but maybe we develop those relations like that business there would be that's information that's like we know all these suppliers we worked very deliberately to find to open source all that data and of course we publish this all too um but still, a person, yeah. what's the value for a person? Well, it's huge. They don't have to sort through this gigantic database to figure out what they need. Mm -hmm. We give them hundreds of hours of labor in terms of our, st our intelligence, so they're going to be willing to pay for that and get a lower price. But once again, everything is open because we're open, right? Yeah. This would be so to, to convert some wood suppliers with the OSC mission and have those guys on the speed dial whenever you get a customer to not have any stockpiling risk yeah and like okay so you stockpile w w what's the what's the big deal with it we got packages we don't like the the, the wood don't get run yeah like well, uh, if you want to buy in bulk to get the price down mm -hmm. you might be sitting with a huge stockpile just taking space yeah that you can't get rid of mm -hmm. so clothes manufacturers and stuff all those markets are yes. extremely tight about stockpiling and, and the house might be bulk so you might so order something in big numbers and then you have a new design and something yeah the the stuff you want on-demand production that's the whole beauty of it is that the risk of things going obsolete or customer no, so flavors yeah, changing like all that kind of stuff but how can we scale it up without piling it right? well you you are developing the supplier relationships even going to like private sawyers to say hey uh i'm gonna need a thousand board feet every one month can you deliver and we get it from like some local sawyer or whatever uh, so that's an inf as I mentioned that's an information business that gathers all that data and that's a like a data driven business but that's the value we're creating and open sourcing it so anyone who wants to get into that can also do it so we become an authority as as this source of good energy and and productivity for people because they they can trust us that we're actually developing this information for everybody's benefit. That's how we get the, the good good vibes and and support from others. And That's kind of yeah. yeah. And uh, they're not going anymore to North, but they're going to the or to us. They right? could be. So, for example, we you know there's say some crazy builder wants to build our stuff because they they're open-minded enough, and uh, then they become a cut you know they benefit from our database or we actually sell them the kits, sell them the products because we have lower price in bulk and stuff like that. I mean, just going to even like with Menards or like getting bulk bulk accounts, that's something that a private customer, just an individual might not have even. So there's, you can explore, okay, what are all the different stores around your area? Do they have like special bulk discounts to contractors and we're, we're like that contractor and, like and we we have that and we can distribute that as soon, so as soon as you have a plan or like a, a, a schedule of doing more than one house we can approach sawyers or sellers of being with, with a rough estimation of how much we need to mm -hmm. avoid stockpiling but then form a custom uh, a relationship with the supplier yeah. at that point you can you know, I might, they might be moved by the fact that like oh, these houses are being built for lower middle-class income, single parents, or whatever it is, uh, yeah. or or millennial gamers who need to be freed, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that there is a case for that kind of business. That you're just selling materials, but the value you're capturing is the lower cost based on bulk and your information of suppliers and your supplier relationships. So that's that's one way to do it. Mm -hmm. So now. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. the other thing about stockpiling is that um, the whole idea of, the, of this uh, open source model is to be to be able to iterate uh, quickly. Yes, stockpiling so does not get you to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's that's the thing. Mm -hmm.
that was already mentioned with the uh, getting from the bomb to the actual parts, but just speaking from my experience, that's a uh, huge expertise actually. At the yes, beginning, when you is. start out, the you source. Look, yeah, you see this spreadsheet with the bomb, and you think, ah, oh, this is easy. But when you start getting beginner. into the ordering business, then soon mm, you figure right. out. Uh, and those wow. websites are horrible. And the question <laughs> is how to maybe communicate people. Maybe they have to make the experience themselves first, but maybe you can also actively communicate that value. Because it would have to be a person that knows, yeah. like the, the BOMs will be valuable to a person who knows how to use a BOM, but the novice, like they would probably go into this, um, like they would not go to our BOM, they would get go to our kit, the plain materials kit. So let's talk about the next level of materials kit, kit and that's where we actually add value by actually cutting and doing things. Yeah. So or the module, or you could do whole modules, right? Um, yeah. Uh, Pre-cut up to modules, yes. Um, I would say there would be one pre kit where prefabrication, in a sense, yeah. Yeah, pre-cut just pretty much just short of module level, like. But you have clear part. You have apps. You know, say all the the parts for the wall module you got. It's already pre-cut. You don't have to do any cutting. That would be hugely valuable to somebody. Um, just so let's say just short of modules. And the third level, we can say kits actual modules so you got not only the materials actual modules that I think is probably the biggest one that we could do that would be a clear revenue model yeah. and actual a modules giant, it's a giant 3D puzzle and maybe yeah. best case people even would say oh, I get a bunch of friends and maybe one person with expertise yeah. and I do this giant 3D puzzle and have a great time yes <laughs> yeah. yes exactly no it's 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 right that's that's it, and uh, and that's where so other products are like this workshop, the crash builder crash course. So imagine what's going to happen next time. We have a lot of this stuff built already, which means what? That means we're going to build more and better next time. We might finish the actual house to actual absolute completion and everything that is beautiful inside. Well, it might take us like two or three times to get there, uh, and then in the next next iteration we'll actually have the attached aquaponic greenhouse with that too in that same short workshop where it's easy like whenever we do this stuff it's hard like right now it's hard stuff right we're building stuff but every time we repeat the workshop it's going to be easier so those for people right. for the ones who, right. who are who are the trainees the crash course takers yeah. it becomes more fun for them because they don't have to work as hard we were seeing that people don't want to work <laughs> right so uh, you can only take that so much those people that's a selling point for our Kits, these kits, these pre-cut kits, they're gonna be like, oh, I could, I actually built this in the workshop. This is pretty cool. And they got a good flavor of it because it wasn't too hard because there was, there was a lot of people and the modules were already available, so it was easy. And they'll be like, okay, cool. So I see the the biggest one would be the actual modules, and that's. So what what could the economics be? Let's talk about just a little briefly. What what would that number be like? I don't know what it's like. So say we want to give the, the rosebud kit to somebody. I mean, what do you got to consider? You also have to consider transportation. How you transport it to to the place? Yeah, I'm mean, gonna so put it up. Cost of lumber and delivery. Labor is something. Yeah, cost of labor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna really, right? So we four people two days. We got Still, but you're gonna base your end price on, on that calculation. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, that's a, that's a I think within within a, a enterprise model, what is most reasonable to be selling is your own time, expertise, know-how, be on a FaceTime link or whatever it is, like to spread yourself. I hope people pick up the project. Maybe they're interested in just the 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 main source uh, without the jigs or like other products, then. Uh, I think it's very well fitting within the open source model to, uh, model to be selling your time or expertise, like mm -hmm. your, your know-how, which is probably the most valuable thing mm -hmm. you can give someone to. Yeah. But Hopefully I, I they don't need it, but yeah. I think that uh, the kids, as Martin said, is uh, like it's a lot of time that we invested on on how to uh, develop a house at, at, at that dimension. Of, of complexity. So, yeah, there is our 
our time and energy in it, and our, and our experience. And I feel that uh, through the kids, we can pro uh, provide, uh, well, we can automatize the process. We can sell to a lot of people without even being there, making yeah. yep. machines work for us. Yeah. Sense. But selling a hotline or be selling your time, you know, like giving someone open source was like, if you want to build it, you do it. Like, I'm not responsible for how you do it, but if you want to try it, here's the plans. And then you, you, you provide your time, your expertise, and that is also huge data collection to understand where the where people uh, so don't really like where people go go wrong. You're talking about the hotline in a sense of what Ken wants to do with the three D printer. Yeah. That uh, okay, so you got you you put your number and people are gonna call you and, and then you're gonna have to or email you and be like we're gonna be on the site between eleven and twelve. Uh, be ready. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Conference. Yeah. That's that's getting yeah. So that could be part of the kit model. That's more like then we getting into the consulting model or just information products model where we'll publish all our stuff for free, but then our time and support around that is what's valuable because you can give people a the Bible of something, but they won't make so much sense of it. They need to be guided through it. Yeah. That's hugely valuable. And it makes the Bible better. Yeah. To have those thoughts. Of the, course. To have. Yeah, of good data on what they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Outsiders that can give us feedback. Yeah, which will which will tighten and make the margins for the modular selling or the pretest be better too. Yeah, so I'm thinking like base model. You're just producing that kit. The kind of value I think we could be generating from that is like fifty to a hundred bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. If that product is super, for like what? building building a full kit now. A full kit. $50 per hour. Per, per We're saying, hey, the promise there was, so the promise for the, the enterprise, the, the turnkey house model was that we're gonna aim to pay people 50 bucks an hour, people mm -hmm. who are building. The uh, so it's the same. Yeah. yeah. So I have to be at that level. Yeah, it has to be sure. there. Now, um, if you invoke machines like 3D printers, you can set up that infrastructure to provide high value product and probably generate more revenue. I would probably say if you automate, you double it. And this, I'm still talking about like solopreneur model, like start with solopreneur, like one guy, like why talk about one person? Because I mean, uh, it's like a, the baseline. If you it's have a baseline. a CNC machine, you know, do all the window modules, or apertures, or whatever it is, and jigs, you can get a lot done by yourself. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying like then we double that and you you might be making two hundred bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. Because you've invested so much into that automation infrastructure, but that's a lot of your intellect. That's now turning this into an information business and you should be char charging uh, decent money for your time because you got a lot of expertise, but you still get products out there that are lowest cost than mm -hmm. anything else. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. So and then we're just getting closer to the what we propose is reducing the cost of living so that you can focus on self-determination right so so we're actually driving this lifestyle change of what we're really about and that's freeing up people bring up people's time for more important pursuits than just making a living so that's we're actually getting close to that mission i think through automation and if you go either way like a good fight good versus evil it's it's the like if you can have a lot of good open source automation that frees up a lot of distributed people, that's great, that's awesome. Yeah. And I think there's huge, if we can communicate that message, that is very powerful. And that's what we're trying to do here, you we're saying. You could sell this house by giving a person the idea of, of freeing themselves. Yeah. yeah, and what it's gonna turn into, like once the house becomes more productive, like think about that greenhouse. After we built it, I was like, wow, this is so cool. And because I remember my first experience and yeah, it was time to build and at the end it kind of failed. We had to shut it down after a few years. But now it's like, oh wow, look at that. It's there again and it's going to be productive and it's awesome. I just put in uh, duckweed and spirulina and, um, and uh, azola into the pond. I just, the shipment came in. Yeah, yeah. But it looks like, wow, like with less effort now, we got a system that's probably more productive and better and more resilient and stuff like that. So I could see that, okay, we're adding the information and expertise into it. So that literally becomes like your, 
your 100% food production system eventually. You know, eventually. Like once we get it integrated enough, that promise is there between automation, like automated seeding, the automated watering, um, you know, your chickens, your worms. I, I just, you know, I got a shipment of worms and I'm starting my worm bin again, which is like so cool. And man, it's like they reproduce like crazy. That's definitely fish food. I can f feed my fish for, <laughs> for free, you know, stuff like that. And that's doing the recycling uh, material flows. So m the point is that once we soup this up to higher productivity, uh, now you got food, then you got productivity in the micro factory, you got energy on your, your desk, on your rooftop, then you're starting to produce hydrogen. So you got your own uh, gas filling station and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that to me looks like starts to look like freedom that we can actually do that kind of stuff. So, um, so that's automation helping us to do that, and it's definitely there. So base model is fifty hundred bucks. The advanced model is advanced model is the automation, like adding adding automation for like double double the revenue of former. Or I would say like, I, you know, I'm just trying to attach rough numbers, but I mean, I think we got to be thinking about numbers. Um, what other things are there? So, um, I mean, that might be also a revenue model that uh, you basically go on site. I mean, uh, build takes, let's say, two days. Mm -hmm. uh, if maybe, best case, if you, if there's one knowledgeable person and, and unskilled people. Uh, mm -hmm. It's doable in two days, so maybe you could charge for two days, uh, basically leading the build. Yes, so that is the... That's kind of an add-on. You could either edit the module or you could either edit the, well, the raw time. <laughs> well, wouldn't work with two days, of course, but you could edit the module and then as an add-on, <laughs> basically uh, order yourself uh, right it's called leading the extreme man manufacturing workshops like mm -hmm. for external clients like we get hired one of us gets hired because now we know the system and say there's 12 people I mean that's what people do to me there's like come on over we've got a bunch of people mm -hmm. I mean that happened only like with the three bringers we so far we haven't really built other things uh, but we can we've had a lot of offers where it's like oh yeah come on over we'll build the brick press yes that's a feasible model so here it's yes come on over i'll charge you whatever money so you, you and your 12 people or 24 people can actually build this house in a week or something and that you can get a lot of value from that so the workshop hired workshop leader model yeah, whatever we one. call that could even be one an person. event an Archer Anderson event, you know, imagine some, some business type from Archer Anderson building the house in, <laughs> in a week. From where? Well, some, just some whatever, Wall Street kind of types, you know. That's yes, yes. I mean. Why it's totally, uh, you can totally imagine that, you know, they want to do, you know, publicity or something. They say, wow, here we got yeah. the business guys from Wall Street, they build it up in one week and then they donate it to a family. Mm -hmm. Who's in need? Um, I mean, sure. It sounds crazy, but it's no, no, that's absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah we're living in a world now that's yeah, yeah. yeah it's not really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Get away. Co corporate CSR model. There's also, I mean, we can go, go off into other models. There's corporate team building retreat model. Yeah. You have a fun. Hmm? Uh, corporate social. Yes, CSR. Or the idea of corporate team building retreats. That's a thing. Yeah. And people, uh, companies pay a lot of money for that, right? Yeah, and they'll sweat with a smile. <laughs> so they sweat with a smile. <laughs> and we get to charge them for it. And they can, you can also add, once again, the social equity thing where they donate the product to some something, to some charity or, really or person. So you would have also exposed them to a way of thinking that you probably would not see at all. Yeah, I was thinking maybe it's a little progressive, like uh, going business to business and kind of selling the houses to their employees, and um, giving them giving them the opportunity of going there and building a house for one of them, yeah. and then to another, and then to another. Yeah. So I think that's 
It's yeah. kind of the same, right? Good, good for some communities. Uh -huh. yeah. <coughs> yeah. Like in businesses, you know, businesses selling, uh, marketing businesses that they, they kind of uh, win by commission. They kind of, uh, if, if they get into a price, into a, into a selling price, then they, they, they have the, the, the possibility of getting a house and we provide that to them. It's, it's, it's just progressive thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. S and there's also, so there's the technical school, school model, which we're doing. I mean, we're going to start a technical school, an apprenticeship. So that's something we're, we're going to start up. There's the beyond technical school. So that's like, a, I would say that's the apprenticeship model. That's, uh, we'll have more data on that once we start it. Um, so I would say one is apprenticeship model, like with the vets. Um, then there's the formal, like it takes two years to set up a, a formal educational program approved that can take, in this country, you can do the GI Bill thing. What about in, say, Germany? Do you, do you have any other kind of a thing? Like, there's GI Bill in America. You know that? Yeah, I'm not aware of anything like that. Or yeah. Yeah, I might there's be wrong, but also building codes in Germany are extremely, well, let's say difficult. Uh, uh, yeah, so I don't know enough. But yeah. But mm. Spare in buildings, you know. But just off. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The feeling is it's going to be hard. Yeah. But I mean, tiny houses, they, they work in Germany. I mean, mm. okay. from that perspective, I have a book with um, a tiny house book, and I was surprised that they were actually allowed to build that. And, uh, so there's hope. I mean, but they do, for example, 12 volt system. Oh, really? House because that gets them around the, the approval of electricity oh, and, that's and, interesting. and stuff like that. Huh. Yeah. So just 12 volts throughout the house. Yeah, it works for them because they, yeah, they just... They have showers in those? Uh, yeah, showers are done with, but with wood, with wood firing. Okay, yeah. And that seems to work quite well, at least for one person. I mean, it's a tiny house. Yeah, yeah, person. yeah. Yeah, you can uh, run some LEDs and charge your laptop. So just, just some more ideas. Um, what else to share about that? I wrote some notes about um, for enterprise training. Yeah, it's. I mean, there's webinars, annual conference. You could do coaching. Like people do. People do coaching. Like if somebody wants to become a builder, coaching or mentoring. I mean, I'd like to. I'd like to have mentors. I would probably pay for them if I had money. Maybe. Um, I get. I have a mentor, I'm not paying them, but that's a valuable thing that some people might want to pay for that, for the fast track of, I mean, imagine marketing yourself as, okay, well, I'm, I'm an authority on this topic, I can save you a lot of time, I mean, that's that's a mentoring business. <coughs> yeah, and how do you, how do you do that, uh, publish that openly too? Well, you can, of course, publish it openly, but the pri prize is spending time with you, mm -hmm. so sometime like that. Or what I'm actually doing is I'm doing a, the, the, what am I doing? The OSC fellowship thing. The, what, I, what am I calling it? OSC, not apprenticeship, but OSC uh, mentorship. I'm doing that right now. So actually a couple of people have paid for a mentorship along OSC collaborative development. Mm -hmm. So that's a model that somebody can take. Um, What else? Yeah, so between building, building and kits are big ones. There's uh, various information products that where you're selling your time. Um, there's there's like the publishing that comes out of it. Like we can definitely write a good book on this. If somebody who was a publisher that wanted to really crank out a nice book, nice inspiring book, that's a I think would be a great product. I mean, we, we should do that sometime if we get around to it. Um, just have, having e-books and books for print that are kind of like, yeah, add that to your swag list. 
Yeah, uh, coffee table books, which are more about inspiration, or then the full Bibles, you know, download it or even get a physical copy at, at a yeah. cost. I mean, make it good graphics and well organized. Uh, yeah. That would be a cool product that people would want to have. It's, you know, so, I don't know, that's um, it's kind of what I wanted to share about this. What what are some of the main main things we can be selling about it? But to, to develop the kits as far as... Um, like exactly what goes into a kit like with all the jigs that actually comes out of studying the system exactly and, and talking about okay here's here's our build procedures and optimizations that we're going through so so I'd like to next I'd like to go into the uh, and we can kind of finish to, for today but next let's go into actually the the brute force of the build like here's the the process and under seat home too we've got build instructions there's a fabrication diagram breaking down all the steps so what I mentioned before was we do a spreadsheet. Here's all the steps broken down. Time, materials, tools, cost, and then ideas for optimization, like studying the videotape, uh, studying how long it has taken us. And we can come up with a number that we can then uh, start trusting. And that's, uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's called our build time. So we should, I mean, from here on, I kind of see, like, we can talk about all these possibilities, but right now it's about working out that product to like for example if Brian is our first customer well just I mean, all the materials cost what exactly is it I mean I haven't done that exactly and that could be done for various scenarios it's like this is the scenario with Menards which is only in the Midwest but then if you go into Home Depot maybe the price changes a little bit like say on the, you're on the coast because home because um, Menards is I mean it's they got better prices but they don't they're only around the mm -hmm. north and Midwest area so things like that, and the various, various ways, to s various options that we could have. Like, okay, what's what's the PV system cost? Can we include? It? I think we can include it in a base price, so that would be a good thing. But yeah, just all the technical due diligence of what exactly goes in there, yeah, and the step by step of doing it. <laughs> so it's accounting. We turn into accountants tomorrow, people. There's more to do. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Any anything else? I think we can kind of wrap it up here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And any questions from the remote audience, Pavel? Does this make any oh, sense, or is the, it anything you'd like to do? Thanks for the link, Colin. Yeah. Sure. This is more an inspirational book in a sense. Nicely done book about. It doesn't. Yeah, I mean that kind. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> right. Exactly. You get you get a good feel for it. And we can jam pack this with all kinds of very interesting uh, content, but that's, it takes a little bit of work. But we should have this. So this is the collaborators or the graphics artists should do this. Does this book talk about building codes in any sense, or is uh, more a bit, a bit, a bit, just a bit? Now the thing is, so the relevant question for us is: we know we'd like to have this, but how would we in go about inviting? somebody who's a publisher or graphics artist graphics designer, yeah, yeah, to do this collaboratively what does it look like right yeah. you need someone who's built their house you know a lot of those things probably come easier when you have the product and you're and you're out there doing it yeah. and how like how do you do a revenue model where they're getting plenty of money for that i see it's just a simple distributive enterprise they they sell the book they'll have you know we can even give them leads uh, we sell that on our website. We can publish it or send people to their website. We get a little cut or whatever, or, or we don't get any cut, or whatever. But it might be important to find out ways we can incentivize people to actually take that because it's going to take a bit of time. Do we maybe just pay them from the proceeds of one CD Go Home sale and say, okay, we're going to have to nail this book because this is really our marketing material? And so how do we do this? That's that's the kind of question we got to think about. How do we invite more people to the pot to do this stone soup of collaborative development? Yeah, I think you keep the authenticity of, you know, and you find those one in a million graphic designers who are like, yeah, I like that project, I like that mission. And if, if then they can start thinking about the enterprise too much. You can make it sustainable, but you need people with heart in it. Mm hmm Yep. I think, like, incentives. Like, uh, just don't go for one need. Then maybe it's uh, the connection or the community purpose. But go into the growth development, ultimately, um, 
like the money and the certainty you know, the, the capacity of the to go to the unknown you know like mm -hmm. uh, uncertainty there's like certainty and uncertainty as a need if everything would be certain it yeah. would be so easy and, and uh, there would be no uh, passion in life so yeah that's, that's a little bit well, and so I would question like for the next two months which we have what are some goals what are some ambitious goals what would be the ideal outcome that we could actually accomplish in these uh, in our short session because it's only an hour you know every five days a week but our times two four five you know five people 25 hours per week we contribute to this I think um, I, like uh, I speak? yeah yeah what I'm expecting is uh, it's a lot of work uh, reporting the CD for home into the CD Eco Home 3, finish those details. I also think that's a future valuable process, you know. You mean uh, pre cut files for it? Or, or what? Yeah, all of it. All of it, yeah, yeah of course. That's what, that's yeah. Because the main product right now for the OSC is this house. Yeah. And it's the main product for anyone cloning the OSC too. Yeah. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done with it because documentation is freaking hard. Yes. And and so what I'm expecting is just like a headache and uh, and a lot of hard work. I love that. And that's yeah, but that's precisely what's going to be yeah. valuable. Exactly, uh, exactly. It's 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 what's going to be. So I and would like us to be like the A team of doing that stuff. Yeah. Uh, we might not get all the way there. We might even surpass it. But that will give us the A team can move on to the next one. Yeah. Now you think you can build a model that's similar to this, or you're gonna have to re redesign everything for Sweden, if you think oh, you're I haven't researched it uh, too much. Uh, I think I would show all the plans to builders in Sweden and ask them how does this uh, correlate to code. Yeah. Uh, assess those details and then yes. move forward from there. But they yeah, think it would, right, in Sweden. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's and I would also ask the tiny homes, the, the hackers around the building walls, not the conventional builders, but also get a hold of the people who are like, yeah, but you could do like this. You know. Yeah, so you, even though you may not build exactly, I think what you're doing is seeing that, okay, well, we still need this base of design that can be then adapted. Mm -hmm. So I think that's good. Yeah. yeah like, for you. like you. Mm -hmm, exactly. Or can, if you do another techniques, like we're building up for the CB version, right? We still have to have those systems, like here's the foundation and, and other parts. The stairs will probably be the same or whatever. And With the things CB like that. bamboo. Now, by the way, that it's called the Seed Eco Home. It's called the C E E D Eco Home. Seed Eco Home, the Compressed Earth Environmental Dwelling. That's that's the Seed Eco Home, the the next version. Yeah. Hello. Well. Yeah. Thanks for listening, Paolo. All right. Excellent. So yeah, let's wrap it up. Great session. We'll uh, we'll continue. Yeah. Now, uh, ready for some pain. Love it. Okay. So, uh, Pablo's going to send an email with feedback. Message. Yeah. And of course, as we go through this, we invite everybody. You know, we've got a little core of excitement. And, and the farther we get to that product, the more people are going to want to jump on it. We're, we're just, someone has to do that, do the hard work. And we're doing that hard work. So, thanks, guys. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yo. What do we have to do with seconds? So, uh, I, I did the. Um, Excel sheet. Yeah. We're gonna go like video to video because like we need to. Put yeah, steps. I mean, there's. <coughs> so first thing you go to SH two and build instructions and look at the fabrication diagram, and and I would try to go between like iconic representation of all the steps, uh, spreadsheet representation of all the steps, CAD for each step. So each step has all these assets, uh, like with. So go into. Um, up there, go to build instructions, fabrication diagram. Uh, it's I did this rough. It's kind it's kind of cryptic, but it, it shows like step one step to the next, and then on the next page it actually sh like writes some of the steps. But we can start there, and this was for the very initial one. So now we might have changed a few things, but that would be a start. Convert that to spreadsheets. The way we can invite people ideally is okay. Well. We even need structural analysis. That's some FreeCAD dudes that do FEA and FreeCAD. Like yeah, yeah. for every single thing, there's so many different people that can contribute to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Graphics designers, the icon people who give us a nice visual language for 
how things are put together, brochures, like so, graphics assets, I mean everything, video, like even just editing the stuff we have already, which are all the clips, I mean they would make a pretty cool video if somebody actually edited this to a... Uh, Edit this and added some voiceover and Would stuff like that. And possibly depend depends who it is. But, we, we uh, but I mean, just invite, keep inviting people to you know we're 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 in debt right now, so we can't really throw money around right now. Yeah. So <laughs> we gotta we gotta sell some homes <laughs> to dig ourselves out of the hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, we're going. We're we're just going full force at it. And uh, but the idea is like the way we want to invite people is, well, look, here's this product. It it is beneficial for you to contribute to it. Like say Anthony, he might you know maybe Anthony might contribute some time to mm -hmm. this or whatever. I don't well, know he, if he's he a he documenter. He's running back in as soon as he got his thing running, but that's gonna take. Yeah. So I would prefer to call him or like you know write him an, an email inviting him for the summit. You know, like, uh, okay, we're gonna pay you this, blah, blah, come. I know you, you work well, you like the, the, the house, you got good leadership. We really want people like that. And, yeah. and for the, a for the that, video, yeah. having a baby, there's a lot of marketing behind it. But I also think that we should get a real professional builder to get things done. But I think we're doing it already. Mm -hmm. Professional okay. builder to get the, what you say and uh, spread this to professional builders. No, no, no like uh, you, you, you just said that with Bob, your uh, kind design of expertise. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yes I, I, no, uh, like one of these guys. Sometimes professionals there are fit and the Yeah, but exactly. these guys, these guys are yeah, better. This is okay, imagine these. That they, they one of them, you know, these are real innovators, actually. Here, so okay. help us build it, or like, yeah. would you recommend us? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we should actually make that one enterprise session, and um, the actual design charrette. So there's Paul. Gotta talk to Paul. Mm -hmm. So uh, 